Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Welcome to our fireside chat. My name is Dean Takahashi. I'm the lead writer for GamesBeat at VentureBeat. I also uh, run the uh, GamesBeat conference that takes place uh, next year, April 28th and 29th in Los Angeles. And I'm here with uh, Kevin Lin. And uh, I have Kevin introduce himself. Sure. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Lin. I'm a co-founder uh, and former COO of Twitch. Uh, Twitch is uh, a live streaming uh, interactive video platform for uh, video gamers traditionally. We've now expanded into many other categories, mm -hmm. um, but we were built uh, really as a home for gamers uh, as the original concept. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us uh, how Twitch got started? We're on the founder stage here, I guess. So. Yeah, sure. So uh, Twitch actually used to be a company called Justin TV, which was a live video streaming platform that was for general use. Uh, so think YouTube, but live. This was launched in 2007. It started as a uh, one-man reality show based on Justin Kahn, one of our co-founders. Uh, and he streamed his life 24-7. And we uh, went from there. We kind of grew that company, got through the recession somehow, made, uh, started making money. And as a result of that, uh, we had not only built this huge distributed live video network um, uh, around the world, uh, but it gave us the flexibility to start thinking about you know, what, do we, what do we really want to do with this platform. And uh, flash forward to mid-2010, uh, a bunch of us, we're all gamers. We we're huge StarCraft nerds. Somehow got access to the StarCraft II beta. And uh, we were playing constantly. We were playing in the office. We were playing with, you know, just instead of working, we were basically playing video games. And uh, realizing that the behavior we were exhibiting ourselves was we were going home after work, late night, probably midnight. We'd play StarCraft that late. And watching YouTube videos of uh, pros that were being commentated by YouTube creators uh, to get better at the game. And we started thinking to ourselves, you know, this really could be live. There's no reason why I wouldn't watch a StarCraft Pro player live just to learn from how they play. And we started reaching out to creators on other platforms, uh, that YouTube creators that weren't doing live. Uh, and that was really a big change for us, actually spending the time to talk and talk with, interview, and really get to know our core customer, who's the creator, and learning from them what were the tools they needed to have that we needed to build in order to make them successful. And so from there, uh, we started building you know, advertising I commercial I remember breaks. at the time that uh, a lot of people made fun of Justin that, sure. you know, like, isn't it ridiculous that uh, he thinks his life is interesting enough to live stream? Yeah, right? there's, a lot of, there's a lot of downtime <laughs> yeah. in, in real life, as it turns out. Uh, 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 so they, you know, Justin was streaming himself working, uh, 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 walking around San Francisco. Um, he was carrying around a backpack full of 80 pounds worth of batteries. Just to do that. And flash forward to today, where we started in gaming with Twitch, we're doing that again. So there's uh, this whole section of the site uh, that used to be called IRL, now it's called Just Chatting, which is kind of going back to that original concept of life casting. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it all spawned from our own love for video games um, uh, and really talking to creators and learning from them what they needed. We eventually launched Twitch in 2011, uh, mm -hmm. June 2011 at E3, uh, because of some of the feedback we were getting was you know, from the games community was, we want our own home. We don't want to be on. Justin TV, we'd rather be in our own place. And so we forked the company in two. Uh, some of us, myself, Emmett, Justin, uh, carried on to, mm -hmm. to do Twitch. Mm -hmm. And then Michael uh, Seibel, who's now CEO of Y Combinator, uh, spun out a company called Social Cam with two of our engineers as co-founders, uh, which got bought by Autodesk in uh, 2014, uh -huh. uh, 2012, mm -hmm. sorry. And, uh, and Amazon bought you guys, huh? We bought, yep, 2014, <laughs> uh, 2014 uh, we were purchased by Amazon. Uh, what a lot of people don't know, and I think still to this day, we were, we still are actually one of the top five websites in most countries around the world just by pure bits being pushed. Yet a lot of people don't know what we do. We serve a very specific audience, um, a big audience, but a very specific audience. Um, so yeah, a lot of that, uh, uh, you know, fundamentally changed our lives, changed the, the company's life, um, mm -hmm. uh, and now we get to, you know, do a lot of fun things and and, and expand uh, yeah. into other verticals. Uh -huh. And how how big has Twitch uh, gotten at this point? And like, sure. What are the stats now? Yeah. So uh, these days we have about uh, over 15 million people come to the site any given day. Um, we have about 1.5 million concurrence on average. So number of eyeballs watching or number of people watching. Uh, our platform any given second. Uh, and people are watching for almost two hours a day. So if you think about your average television viewing time, that's about four, four and a half hours, depending on country and region. Uh, so we're about half of that for the young audience. Our average age is 26. Um, we've got three million creators that create content every single month. 
um, tens of thousands of partners. So partner streamers are those that are making money on the mm -hmm. site. Uh, partners are now making millions of dollars a year. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So people are, for those of you who don't know Twitch very well, people are making millions of dollars streaming video games, something that they were already doing anyway from the safety of their own home. Getting paid to play video games. It's right? the dream. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, not so long ago that uh, people thought it was uh, uh, just a crazy idea to watch somebody else play a video game. Right. Spectating a video game was just uh, ridiculous. Um, five years ago, maybe? Ten years ago? I don't know. But yeah. it's, uh, it's interesting how technology, in this case, has produced cultural change. Right? Sure. Yeah, it turns yeah. out, I mean, if you really think about it, and this is something I wish we were better at pitching when we were raising money in mm -hmm. 2013, uh, 2012, 2013, um, which is that this is actually a habit that we already partook in a, a, as, as kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd have a Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Sega Genesis, we'd go to the arcade, mm -hmm. and you'd be with your friends, and there's two controllers back then. Mm -hmm. uh, chances are you weren't, you know, you weren't doing homework or anything constructive. You were watching other people play while you were waiting your turn. So we were already, without even realizing it, participating in, in passive entertainment of video game content. Mm -hmm. And so I think because of that, because that whole generation grew up, our, our generation grew up mm -hmm. doing that, um, it just wasn't something that we thought was, you know, I think mm -hmm. Silicon Valley re reacted to it exactly like you said, like, this is ridiculous. There's, you know, this is, video games already was stigmatized, right? Mm -hmm. Stigmatized is a bad hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, you're better off, better off going outside and playing sports or, mm -hmm. or something else. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there was a lot of sort of refusal to believe that mm -hmm. this was actually a habit of an entire generation that they, as a generation, the investors didn't really get. They didn't know, mm -hmm. they didn't experience that growing up, but we did. Yeah. And so I think we really just tapped into something that was already a latent habit. Yeah, you take that habit of watching somebody else play, and then um, that turns into the whole esports phenomenon. And then you guys just sort of grow in a vortex uh, with each other, right? Uh, yeah. uh, esports on one hand and Twitch uh, viewership on the other. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. definitely esports mm -hmm. was a big, you know, big part of the genesis of the idea for Twitch and mm -hmm. you know, StarCraft. We were watching StarCraft esports. We were engaging with StarCraft mm -hmm. pro players and commentators as early creators on the site, mm -hmm. a heavy focus of ours. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, esports has been around for mm -hmm. more than 20 years at this point. Twitch has mm -hmm. been around for um, eight years, a little over eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really just unlocked, you know, mm -hmm. with the proliferation of broadband and mobile internet, uh, we were able to do live video at mm -hmm. a you know, non-ridiculous cost. It was mm -hmm. an affordable cost. Mm -hmm. So we we're actually able to build those pipes uh, for, this, you know, for mm -hmm. this unique thing that was starting to happen, which became mm -hmm. what you see today as yeah. esports. And these viewership numbers are now sort of dwarfing a lot of traditional media, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, you think about even across Twitch, which is you know part esports, but a lot of UGC content, a lot of individual streamers are streaming and, and, and earning a living on Twitch. Mm -hmm. That's 1.5 million concurrents. Most average television networks in the United States and, and really everywhere, like they're they're that's pretty high. That that yeah. that puts us in the top five of of cable television networks. Um, cable television channels, I should say, um, pretty much in most countries across the globe. Mm -hmm. So Twitch is bigger than CBS or whatever. At, at uh, points, yes. Yeah. At <laughs> points, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you think yeah. I mean, a, a lot of folks, you know, you think about local news channels, for instance, in small mm -hmm. towns or, or, or even big cities, average concurrency might be 50,000 to, 50, to 100,000. Uh -huh. They peak during big shows mm -hmm. uh, in the millions, of course. We also mm -hmm. peak in the millions. Uh, our 1.5 is our average. So we're really right there. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, these other phenomenon that's sort of intersecting here is like sort of live video, right? And we've all seen sort of the, the rise of that. Uh, our, our cell phone networks got better, right? And, uh, and enabled that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of wonder like all the, all the different things that had to come together in order to make this possible, uh, it seems like there's a bit of a perfect storm here for you guys, right? Oh yeah, I mean, I think um, you know everything from the proliferation of broadband, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, mobile phones. I mean, you look at Southeast Asia as an example. Uh, a lot of countries there didn't entirely skip broadband development, but they, mm -hmm. the youth are really attached mm -hmm. to their phones, and mm -hmm. that's what they—that's their first device. It's mm -hmm. not a PC. Maybe they went to a PC bong or a LAN cafe. Mm -hmm to play mm -hmm. uh, PC games, but for the most part now, mm -hmm. they're heavily engaged with mobile gaming content. They're mm -hmm. watching everything on their mobile phone. So mm -hmm. that's just a, it, it, it really was this perfect collision, perfect timing for us, I think, mm -hmm. uh, when we started this idea uh, was that that 
you could pull down mm -hmm. a five megabit, seven megabit per second stream, mm -hmm. um, which is required for video games. You, you don't really want granularity. You want to see the, the graphics in their you know, highest integrity, mm -hmm. um, and you want to see the streamers so that you can really interact mm -hmm. with them as well. Yeah, just last week I saw this astounding stat about Southeast Asia and the gamers there, and about 90% of them are playing mobile esports, right? They're they're all competing with each other. And oh yeah. The, the um, craze for esports in Southeast Asia is is sort of like rivaling StarCraft in Korea, I guess. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look at games like PUBG Mobile, mm -hmm. Free Fire, uh, Arena of, of Valor. These are popular games. We don't see them in the West as much, mm -hmm. uh, but they're very popular in Southeast Asia and Latin America to the point where some of these games have 50 to 60 million daily active players. Mm -hmm. That's daily. And their esports are peaking. These games have only really been around for a couple of years as well. Mm -hmm. And in just those two years, not only have they reached such a large player base, uh, but from an esports perspective, the tournaments they run will see a million concurrence, which mm -hmm. is huge. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's bigger than a lot of the big esports leagues that you see that are talked about more, uh, mm -hmm. out, out, particularly out in the West. Uh, but Overwatch League, for instance, and, and well, LCS peaks much higher. Um, but a lot of CSGO tournaments and so on are actually not even as big as this. Mm -hmm. And this, these games have only been around for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So it's been interesting to watch all the milestones that Twitch has sort of gone through here. And uh, you know, one of them is that uh, there's not just one company doing this anymore, and that there's a whole competitive matrix out there now. Uh, Google responded with you know, YouTube uh, doing a lot of live video. Uh, there's Facebook Live. Uh, there's Microsoft with Mixer. Uh, Caffeine, uh, more startups as well. And um, it's, it's gotten to be very interesting competition, right? Uh, uh, I'll I, I let you. Yeah, take that. No, sure. So I mean, it, you know, it, we're no stranger to that. I think it's a it's it's a great. I don't know if it's validation because a lot of people are tuning in. So clearly, mm -hmm. there's a big demand for this. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone's got their own theses, right? A lot of it is, I think, building into cloud gaming. One thing we've always wanted to do is make it really easy to go from watching someone play a game to playing that game with them. This is behavior we already see on the platform. Um, uh, so. What if you made that easier? So right now, in order to do that, there's all these steps you have to go through as a streamer to allow your fans to play with you. Mm. You can, with cloud, you can make it easy. You don't even need to download a game. A brand new game could come out, streamers playing it, um, and they can say, okay, next four people to click this button get to jump into a game with me. And I think with, with cloud gaming, that, that, that is a thing now. That is a real thing that can happen. Imagine you can walk up to your local public basketball court, play a game, play a scrim game with your favorite basketball player. You can play with LeBron James. That'd be super cool, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's something we've always wanted to empower. And I think now that um, people are starting to finally realize how big the games industry is. It's mm -hmm. $120 billion a year. It's bigger than TV, music, film. Mm -hmm. uh, it's bigger than you know, film and music combined mm -hmm. uh, as an industry every single year. And it's growing faster than most other entertainment industries. And people are starting to finally realize that, I think. Mm -hmm. I think they've known, but they're really starting to take it seriously. So you're starting to see companies like Google and Microsoft mm -hmm. really want to get into the space. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, 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 mm -hmm. it's not yeah. a surprise. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a very different type of content uh, versus what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Instead of buying a TV show that's written and scripted and produced, you're you know, going after streamers. You're, you're mm -hmm. looking to develop the relationships with individual streamers. Mm -hmm. And we had this big uh, competitive event uh, where Ninja, who rose to f you know, 50 million followers on, on Twitch, uh, uh, recently defected to Microsoft and, and Mixer. Um, and uh, ouch, that's got that's got to hurt. Very right? sad about that. Very <laughs> sad. About, I mean, I've known you know we've known Ninja for 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 ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't know that he's been streaming for that long before mm -hmm. he really broke. And he mm -hmm. broke really with with Fortnite. He used to be this uh, the mm -hmm. Halo pro player, mm -hmm. very dedicated Halo streamer. Uh, then when Battle Royale came out, H1Z1, mm -hmm. um, PUBG, and then subsequently Fortnite, mm -hmm. uh, he kind of rode that wave. And yeah. and it was really cool. I, I think what what Fortnite did and what Ninja was able to do mm -hmm. was really bring games to the next level. I mm -hmm. think that's something we've always thought a lot about. How do we impact the games industry mm -hmm. um, and make it OK to play? Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it, like, like I said earlier, it is a stigmatized mm -hmm. hobby. Yet it brings so many people together. It actually teaches you 
a lot of good social skills. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's something that was important in our lives and, and a lot of our users' lives. And they really elevated gaming mm -hmm. into the mainstream in a way that we, you know, that I think a lot of people hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so suddenly it became cool mm -hmm. to play games. Rappers, musicians, they used to tell us. Like, hey, they talk about more cultural changes, that you're making gaming sort of cooler and more yeah. acceptable. Uh, it's, not yeah. a, it's not a nerd thing it's anymore. No longer, yeah. It's no longer this like, you know, hidden mm -hmm. in the basement nerdy uh -huh. thing. Uh, it's something that people socialize over. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've even seen this just in sort of the diversity on the website mm -hmm. uh, and, and the games industry in general over the last couple of years mm -hmm. uh, is we went from what used to be a very male skewed audience, about 90%, to now 70%, um, so it's 30%. Uh, women, which is which is a huge mm -hmm. change in a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, but really, I think people are much more open to talking about video games. People are much more open to playing games as a fun thing to do on a weekend mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. before, where mm -hmm. uh, you know there was a lot of like, oh, let's go watch a movie, let's go you know do something else. Gaming is now cool. Uh -huh. uh, I think esports has helped that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Esports players are now sort of rock stars, mm -hmm. and, and that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I guess the, these content creators themselves are becoming these rock stars, right? They're on the level of a LeBron James, and uh, uh, they get the model behavior, like they get to deal with uh, how to how to deal with toxic people, right? And uh, yeah, uh, they get to you know teach others uh, how to behave online. I think. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Of, it, that, that's actually a really interesting point. A lot of folks, if you're interested in streaming, um, what a lot of people don't thing to do is they do have to network with each other. And there's a lot of this giving back in the community. So mm -hmm. Ninja, Dr. District, all these big streamers that we have, mm -hmm. um, they drive a lot of the traffic on the site for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but what they try to do is play with other streamers. They try to lift up other content mm -hmm. creators mm -hmm. um, and, and help them grow, help yeah. them reach new audience, which is really cool behavior you don't necessarily see, mm -hmm. you know, typically in the entertainment industry. And, yeah. and that's something we really highly encourage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I guess the top 50, I mean, uh, have they reached a point where uh, they're all sort of these mega rock stars and really um, can you foresee like a lot of competition for those top 50 uh, streamers now? Like, you know, yeah, I Microsoft's think so. yeah. going to try to raid some more people away and uh, you know, all, is, yeah. is that really going to matter because uh, these entertainers have such large followings that they can sort of make or break a platform, I guess? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, so far, you know, a lot of the early data shows, it didn't really have too much of an impact for Mixer, unfortunately. And, mm -hmm. and for us, I think, you know, we have up and coming streamers all the time. And a lot of people are just part of Twitch as a culture. Twitch as a platform is, is a culture, is a community. So a lot of folks have friends there. They've made friends there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they watch multiple streamers, so they mm -hmm. tend to stick. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I think, I think it's, we don't know. We don't know where this is going to go. Uh, uh -huh. it's, it, we've always had competition in the space, mm -hmm. um, but now I think it, it's obviously getting more aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and a lot of people are trying to figure out how to capitalize on the space. Uh -huh. um, and you know, we have to, we, you know, to stay ahead, we have to innovate. We have to make sure we treat our partners uh, the best way we, we possibly can. We need mm -hmm. to help new up and coming streamers grow and, and help new people become streamers that weren't before. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to build basically tooling at all levels of that. Mm -hmm. How do we uh, help streamers uh, network with each other, play with each other. So we built something called um, uh, squad streaming so mm -hmm. that you can do pick, sort of side-by-side -side picture uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 video players so that people can, instead of just sort of playing with them and pushing people to the stream, they can actually pull their streams directly into their mm -hmm. channel um, and promote them that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do hosting, we do co-streaming. Co the streaming um, is sort of evolving from what it was, right? It's, it's becoming more of a two-way thing as well, two, two directions. Uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It, right, traditionally one, it's a, you know, it's true broadcast, one to many, one to many broadcasts, but now you're starting to see, mm -hmm. uh, again, we try to find the behaviors and, and get the feedback from our creators that of, of habits that they're starting to build to, d to develop their streaming career, mm -hmm. to grow their channels, and turn those into product uh, to make their lives easier, mm -hmm. um, and that's really you know that 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 really helps a lot in mm -hmm. terms of that streamer networking and that sort of cross growth that we see a lot. So as a steward of the platform, what do you have to think about to, to, to not screw this up? 
I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. I yeah. think, um, you know, it, we, we've always had a good, uh, good line out with our, our creators. We, mm -hmm. you know, sort of pride ourselves in the relationships we're able to build. Mm -hmm. uh, we do take care of them. We, we spend a lot of time talking to them about their careers, not just on, on Twitch, but also, you know, how to use other platforms, how to think about, you know, budgeting for their lives, mm -hmm. um, how to think about, you know, what other things they can do. Do they mm -hmm. want to do sponsorship mm -hmm. um, influencer things? Do they want to become talent at esports or gaming conventions? So we mm -hmm. try to help them expand their career outside of just streaming. Mm -hmm. yeah. So esports and, and um, Twitch seem symbi symbiotic, I guess, in a lot of ways, but uh, it's, it's actually not a huge part of your audience, right? It's not. The yeah, common, we, we love esports, yeah. and it's a big part of you know, the genesis of Twitch, and we care a lot about the growth of the industry, the healthy mm -hmm. growth of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at just esports leagues, mm -hmm. it's only about 10% of our traffic. There's that much more content. There's all this long tail content. Mm -hmm. um, remember, there's about you know, 500,000 uh, uh, people streaming every day. Mm -hmm. So there's all this long tail content, and so a lot of the long tail content that is like sub 50 concurrence, highly engaged small communities that are really sort of built around the nodes that are our, our, our streamers. Um, but, uh, and then you see the folks at the top, some of which are esports pros, some of which are personalities like Dr. Disrespect. Um, and so you see this huge, you know, sort of huge you know, mid and also long tail. Um, and so I think, you know, it, it's really about uh, giving them the tools. We're also starting to expand. So uh, a lot of what uh, our, our feedback we got from streamers a couple years ago led to a, a new category called IRL, which is again harkening back to the early just TV days, mm -hmm. where while they weren't streaming gaming, they were walking around convention streaming, they were doing travel shows while they you know visited Japan, um, or 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 other other types of content. So we're starting to relax mm -hmm. those rules a little bit around just streaming games, yeah. um, and we're starting to see people do all kinds of things on the platform. Mm -hmm. So as parents, uh, should we let our kids uh, quit school to stream? It's a, it's a e sports like any other job. It's a huge commitment. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's not as easy as just turning on. You can't you can't just be the best player in the world and stream and that just automatically works. You have yeah. to engage with the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and, and and spend a lot of time being. Uh, well, it's a lot about reliability of content. Mm -hmm. It's about a lot about scheduling yourself and making sure your audience knows when you're going live. Mm -hmm. um, but you see a lot of these big streamers are streaming every single day, many many hours a day, mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard to. It's very hard to draw a line because if mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, because of the way revenue on the site works, it's advertising, it's subscriptions. You really have to make content to, to make money. So that's something we think about a lot too, right? How do you, how do we help our creators have better balance in life? Um, but mm -hmm. it's not so easy, and and it, it's there's a lot of people trying. Three million people try every single month. Uh -huh. um, so I would say, not necessarily, uh, it, it, you know, is it is it that simple to just say, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to become a streamer? It takes a <laughs> lot of effort. Um, it takes a lot of effort. I'm, I'm, I'm curious how many streamers out there in the world make uh, a million bucks or more. Uh, oh, uh, many uh, of these somebody's days. Somebody's guess would be very interesting there. Yeah, um, you got to remember. Yeah. I mean, we uh, so we have you know we have several uh, monetization streams, advertising mm -hmm. subscriptions, bits. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is this patronage mechanic. A lot of people subscribe. It's free content, but people still subscribe because they want this. They want to support the streamers. They have their entertainer of choice, and they want them to be able to build a career on that. Um, and that those are the main monetization things that happen on our site, but there's other revenue streams. They, they get direct sponsorships, mm -hmm. they do influencer campaigns uh, directly with brands, uh, they do you know, platforms like Patreon, which mm -hmm. are sort of these third party um, middle layer subscription platforms that sit across all the platforms. Mm -hmm. So there's all these other revenue streams that creators have these yeah. days. Um, but yeah, people are really making money on this stuff. Yeah. So there's some in interesting things about what's still to come, and I kind of wonder just what what some of your vision is there, and uh, you know, YouTube had an interesting sort of notion that if uh, if you put a a link out there, somebody could click it on it and jump right into a, a live uh, cloud gaming uh, experience on Stadia, right? And uh, and so a, a streamer could share a link, and somebody could dive into a game uh, right at the very point where they're playing and, and join a co-op battle or something like that. Uh, that sounded really great. Uh, is, is Stadia is here now, but it's, uh, you can't do that yet. <laughs> right. uh, but I, I wonder, you know, does that uh, give a nod toward what's coming in the future, or are there other things you're looking for? I think so. I mean, that's something we thought about for a really long time. Mm -hmm. and, and like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's behavior we already see. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
streamers play games with their fans? How do we make that easier? Mm -hmm. And so the promise of cloud gaming does make that super easy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think that, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. What happens next after that, though, is that games can be developed now with that concept in mind, not just the individual player or multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Now you've got this audience, this whole group of people that you weren't necessarily thinking about before mm -hmm. as you developed a game. And so I think you're going to see a lot of innovation there. There have been a few games that have come out in the past that were kind of like Hunger Games, where the audience could vote with dollars to affect and impact what's going on in the game, whether mm -hmm. a health pack shows up uh, for your favorite player, or parts of, the, you know, parts of the map suddenly disappear, or go up in flames. And so extrapolating from that concept where the audience can actually impact, I think is gonna, that's going to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of game companies that have been thinking about this problem now for years. And you're going to start seeing some of those games come out yeah. soon. Uh, and that's going to, I think, spurn this whole evolution of a new style of game development. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, yeah, I think uh, in terms of what, what else we're thinking about, you know, we're trying a lot of other adjacent categories. So mm -hmm. sports, we work with the NBA and the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way we do that, with the way we are approaching these things is not just to take the same television feed and put it on Twitch we want to give our creators the opportunity to create content around this stuff themselves. So we take a naked feed from uh, NBA G League and NFL Thursday Night Football, and then we have our, our partners actually become the commentator and talk over that piece of content for their audience. And so it not only is introducing that content to that creator's audience, that, and many of them haven't probably watched sports or you know, haven't you know, in a while. Mm -hmm. And so you're starting to see that good crossover. But it also gives them something fun to do. And it's a bit more relaxing. You know, you're not actively playing a game. You get to break out of that for a little while and do something new. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, so good. It's, it's been a really fun project. Or these projects have been super fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done this with television uh, shows as well, like Power Rangers and, uh, and Pokemon. Um, and uh, the audience seems to really like that. Mm -hmm. So 5G is coming, uh, is that going to give you the chance to crack mobile? Yeah, mobile is something we've been thinking about for a long time. Um, and I think now that we've got, really within the last couple of years, games that uh, have long play sessions. We tried to do mobile game streaming way back in the day, um, and it was too early. A lot of the games back then, game sessions were just too short, 10 minutes or sub 10 minutes. Wasn't enough time for a live streaming experience. Maybe just fine for on demand, but not really for, for us. Now, though, you, you know, people are playing the games I mentioned before, Free Fire, PUBG, Mobile, uh, Arena, Valor, et cetera, for hours and hours. That actually works really well. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to stream from mobile. Um, so, but now that if, when 5G comes out, it's now very easy to do both. It's very easy to play a high, you know, sort of high graphical quality game on your phone and stream to a platform mm -hmm. like Twitch. Um, we just need to make it easy. Right now, you have to plug your phone in and into your PC and still run all your PC software to, to stream. We need to make that easier. I think the next uh, milestone is that we're all going to get paid to play games. Let's hope. And it's your job to make that happen. Right. We'll keep trying. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Dean. All right.